Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. If you hang out on social media, you've probably heard the term hard parker thrown around the car forums quite a lot. Now, normally it's a derogatory term that's aimed at somebody who's more worried about how their car looks at a car show or cruise night than actual performance. And many times those cars have an airlift suspension. I'll be the first to admit, one of the cool things with airlifts is you can lower the car all the way to the ground that it looks great for car shows. But what a lot of people forget is airlift is actually a high performance suspension. You have adjustable dampening, you have adjustable ride height, the same things you find in all kinds of other high end suspension. Now I'm not going to say airlift is the best suspension for drag racing, it's not the best for road racing, but the nice thing about it, it's good at everything, which most suspensions aren't going to do. A lot of people have been asking about an airlift installation for the S550 Mustang. Today we're going to install this 3P kit on this 2015 Mustang GT. This is the Airlift 3P kit. It's going to fit all 2015 through 2017 Mustangs. And like I said, while Airlift might not be the best suspension at any particular thing, it's probably one of the best all-around suspensions you can put on your car. Now, they're going to give you everything necessary for installation, but the heart of the system is going to be the 3P controller. This allows you to dial in your ride height, dial in your performance, and like I said, the shocks and struts are also fully adjustable, making this really a truly versatile system. Everything needed for installation is included, including the air tank, compressor, air lines, along with new shocks and struts and the bags themselves. One of the other myths with air suspensions, people are worried about the bags popping. Now, airbag technology has been around for a long time. It's very popular in the trucking world. It's popular with pickup trucks for leveling kits. Trust me, these bags, the technology behind them, they're very, very durable, and having them pop is definitely not something you have to worry about. This is the 3P controller that's included with the system. I said this is the heart of the system, is this allows you to control all the aspects of the ride height, setup, stuff like that. One cool thing with the 3P system though, so you can use this controller, you can also use your cell phone. There's an app for both Android and Apple products allowing you to control everything that the system does right from your cell phone. For this installation, you'll definitely need a lift or a jack and jack stands and a well-stocked toolbox. Before we get too far in installation, the first thing I'm going to tell you, if you've ever done shocks and struts and springs on one of these cars, you can install an airlift suspension. Basically all there is to it, you're installing that along with a tank, a compressor, a controller, and then a bunch of airlines and a couple electrical connectors. Now what we're doing with ours, the owner of this car actually has plans of doing something different and custom with the trunk in the future, so we're not going to go crazy hiding everything. What I did is grab a random piece of wood from a leftover pallet, what I'm going to do is bolt the pieces to that piece there, still allows to actually get to our spare tire, it'll still pop up, but it keeps it clean and out of the way. We're going to paint that to make it look a little bit better and then begin the installation. We're going to begin the assembly outside of the car by getting the tank ready to be installed. Now what we're going to do is put a bunch of fittings on here so everything can connect properly. We start on the bottom. This is where your drain is going to go and it's also going to be a purge valve and a fill valve at the same time. To start, put one of these little angle pieces right in here. Basically what you want to do is turn it. Let's get it hand tight. And grab your wrench. Do one and three quarter rotations. One. And three quarters. Now here's where you want to figure out kind of where your configuration is going to be. Now in our case, we're going to connect our air compressor to this side over here. This will fit right in the side of the tank on this side here. We're not going to use the lower one, we have to install a plug. Now some of the fittings come with sealant and some of them don't. If they don't, we're going to provide some thread sealant, which you'll have to provide yourself, on the threads before you put it in. And the same thing. One turn. A quarter. Now this side is going to go to our controller. This is going to have a filter on it. You're going to grab this fitting here. Again, put some sealant on it. When you install the filter, you want to make sure the arrow is pointing away from the tank and you want it in the down position when it's tight. Now we'll 
install the fitting on the other side of the filter. Now for the top hole here, we'll install a plug. These two pieces here are going to be part of this bottom fitting. This will be your pressure release valve here, which you want inside the car. This can actually be used for filling the tank. You want to mount that on the outside of the car. So those right now we're not going to worry about. They'll be added later once we start cutting our airlines. All right, now we're going to mount the tank. Now if you're mounting it to the metal inside your vehicle, go there. Like I said, in our case, we're using this piece of wood from our pallet. What you want to do is basically mark the holes. Once you have marked, then you're going to drill the holes to mount it. I grab the supplied hardware and bolt everything down. Now the airlift controller can be mounted vertical or horizontal, but it can't be mounted upside down. And the best place to put it is actually higher than the tank. So we're gonna mount it right up here in this corner. It's plenty of space, plus it's out of the way. What we're gonna do is just bend this down, this metal, just bend it down just a little bit, just to make sure we have enough clearance for the air hoses. Then there's a template included. We're gonna mark the holes and install it with the supplied hardware. Now it does include self-tapping hardware. We're gonna drill some small pilot holes just to make it easier. And we'll start with the one we can see a little bit easier here and get it started. There we go. All right, at this point, we're gonna move underneath the car and start on the suspension. We're gonna begin with the rear suspension. This is what you're gonna need for each side of the rear suspension. Make sure you have the correct fitting for the bag, two short bolts with lock washers, two longer bolts with lock washers, retainer, the plate for the upper, the plate for the lower, two spring perches, an upper spring mount, the bag itself, and the rear shock assembly. We're gonna start by putting the fitting into the bag itself. It already has some tape on it, so you don't need anything else. Hand tight, then one and three quarter turns. Now you're going to take the upper mount and you grab one of the longer bolts with the washer, put through from this side here, and install this retainer to hold it in place. Now grab the perch, line it up with the holes on the outside edges here. Then grab your upper mount and do the same thing. Line everything up, then install the two smaller bolts. The rest of these pieces here will get installed on the car, so now we're going to remove our factory suspension. We'll start by moving this bolt here to give us more space on the brake line so we can drop the subframe down. We're also going to remove the bolts for the top of the shock mount and the lower shock mount bolts can pull the shock off as well. And 
And you want to make sure before you do this part here, you want to use a jack or a pole jack as we are and support the subframe. Like I mentioned before, make sure you have the subframe supported because at this point we're going to lower it down. Start by taking these two bolts out here and then we'll remove the subframe bolts. Okay, now we're going to lower the subframe down. Our springs. All right, to install our air spring assembly, you have to grab the nut plate. This is going to go up into the factory upper spring perch, and what that bolt we installed earlier is going to thread into. When you install it, make sure the nut is facing upward. Put up there at an angle, and to sort of center it so it's flat in the upper perch. And now you want to take the other plate and just put it in the bottom of the control arm here, and then put our assembly up into place. I always recommend reading the instructions before you tackle an installation. If you read the instructions provided by Airlift, it's going to tell you to line up this sight hole here with a notch on the spring plate. I've never actually seen any kind of a notch on this rear spring plate. So what you want to do is basically line it up. That hole is facing where the shock is going to mount, and that'll get the bag in the proper location. All right, the next part is going to be tricky. What you have to do is basically get this bolt to thread into the plate. Now the problem is obviously the plate is going to spin, so you sort of have to hold it to get it started for sure and then hold it once you tighten it down as well. I'm going to put the centering spacer on the underside of the control arm and thread it in the bottom of the bag. You're probably going to have to lift up on the control arm to get it to line up. Move the bag around to get it started. And tighten it down. Back over to our table for a minute here. We're going to pull the cap off this, remove this nut, so we can remove the factory shock mount. You see here you have the hard and soft adjustment for the rear shocks. Now you've got 30 clicks of adjustment on this. I like to start around 10. Obviously you adjust this based on your driving style, how you're using the vehicle, but 10 is a good starting point. We'll put the shock into place. Now what we're going to do is use the original bolts and the supplied nuts. I'm going to install the hardware and use the factory bolts with the supplied nuts to install the shocks.
install the brake line. Now we can bolt the subframe back in. Now you can repeat the process on the other side and we'll move on to the front. Now we're at the front of the car, we're going to remove the strut assemblies. One of the nice things about the airlift suspension is they give you an entire strut assembly. There's no pieces we need from this, so we can simply unbolt the factory assembly and bolt our airlift piece in. We're going to start, remove two of these bolts, you think two doesn't really matter, leave the third one loose. All right, now down on the wheel wall here, we're gonna start by disconnecting our sway bar. Put our wrench on the back. We're gonna separate the ABS line now from the strut assembly. Now we're gonna remove the caliper and the rotor so we disconnect the spindle from the strut. To do that, there's two bolts on the back of the caliper. Caliper out of the way back here on the K frame. Now the last step is to separate these nuts and bolts here to separate the strut from the spindle. What you're going to do is loosen up these nuts, then leave them on the bolts and hammer them through. And we'll get the nuts just past the edge of the bolt here, but still keep them threaded on, and then hammer them through. That way we don't mushroom the end of the bolt. Lift up on the strut and the bolt you left hand tight here. Just unthread that. And remove the assembly from the car. The airlift kit also includes new end links for this sway bar. So now with everything out of the way, we're going to remove the end link. Now you're gonna prepare the front strut for installation by installing the air line itself. The line already has a sealant on it, so basically just thread it in, get your hand tight, and then one and three quarter turns. We're gonna install the fitting to go to the air hose as well while we're here. Now you wanna be careful, airlift includes two different fittings, one for three eighth hose, one for quarter inch hose. The kit includes quarter inch hose, so make sure you grab the correct one. I'm going to thread that on and then tighten it down. So before you put on the car, keep in mind these are side specific. There'll be a little L and a little R on the bottom of the caster camera plate. Make sure you have the correct side when you go to install it. Now we're going to put the strut assembly up into place. Get these on loose for now. Strut hanging, now we're going to install the new end link. And now we're going to connect the strut to the spindle. These are splines, give them a little tap to get them set.
machine. Then we can reinstall the brake. We're going to leave the sway bar disconnected for now because you want to take apart the other side so you can lift the whole sway bar up because there's shorter end lengths. So repeat the process on the other side. And then we're going to connect the ABS line, plug the clips in just like the factory. Okay, up in the engine bay now we can tighten down the caster camber bolts. These are very specific. We want to make sure these are 30 foot pound. Airlift does provide torque specs for everything with the insulation, but these I found over the years are very specific. So make sure you get these correct. With the suspension installed and the manifold mounted, it's time to start running the airline. So there's three basic rules to running the airline. First rule is don't kink it. Make sure you have smooth bends wherever you're going to run it to the back of the car. Secondly, keep it away from the exhaust. Don't put it anywhere near where it can get hot. It's plastic, it will melt. The third and most important rule with the airline is cut it straight. Almost every time there's a leak in an air system, it's because somebody had it like this when they cut the line. They include this nice tool. Just make sure you have it nice and centered before you make your cuts. Make sure the cut is nice and straight. If it's at an angle, it's going to leak. We're going to pull up the splash shield because I know there's a factory grommet back there we can use. There's factory grommets on both sides for the front and both sides for the rear, so there's no reason to drill any holes. You also want to make sure with the airline, the braided stainless line, we're going to fish it back behind here when we're finished. You want to leave a little bit of slack, but make sure it is clear of everything because remember, this will move when the car turns, so you want to give yourself some slack and some play in that line as well. We're gonna run our airline right through here. Basically, just cut the edge of this off and then go right through this factory harness. Now, if you pull this out, I always wanna double check what's behind these harnesses. I just happen to know we can go right through that one without a problem. You can see there's nothing there. So we'll go right through there and so just cut that off. Now, there's two different ways you can start. You can start from the manifold and fish outward. I always prefer to start out of the suspension and then fish back towards the manifold. I'm gonna bring this back behind here. It's our fishing line in the interior. Now we're gonna connect to the manifold itself. We've already connected our driver's side lines. Basically the way it is is gonna be your left front, your right front, left rear, and then right rear. And the way you connect this, basically you push it up, and then pull back down, the little gray thing will come down, and that locks it in place. We figured out we're gonna have our line sitting right about here. That gives us enough slack for turning, and makes a good connection, so we're gonna cut right there. And the same thing, just push on and pull to lock it in place. We're gonna install this little strap on the hose as well. Just give it a little more support. Make sure it stays out of the way. It can move freely when it needs to. They are not included with the kit. You can get them pretty much any hardware store. Now the airline for the rear on the passenger side, I'm gonna take this grommet out, come right through here. So what we'll do is once we get the line in, we'll make a hole in this and put it right back through. Now to get that grommet or going through the frame rail, there's a hole right here behind the shock. Now if you want to, you can open it up a little bit more, make it easier, but the line will fit through without any modifications necessary. Our line came through right where we were supposed to put it. Now what we're gonna do is modify the grommet so the line can go through. punch a hole, just cut it slightly. And we can just 
sort of fish the line up. We'll go back and zip tie it later. The fourth location, again, just push it up. Tug down, lock in place. Now here we're gonna figure out how much basic hose we need to cut off. Make sure it reaches comfortably. We're gonna cut it. We're gonna put this little sheath over the hose just to protect it a little bit more back here. Again, this is not something that comes with the kit. It's not necessary, but it'll give it more of a finished look and it'll protect the line a little bit better where it goes into the car. Push in and pull out the locket in place. All right, the line's connected to our manifold. We have a few more lines to do in the trunk, but now we're gonna tackle the wiring. Now, I know wiring intimidates a lot of people. Really, if you've gotten this far, you're almost there. The wiring is not that bad to do. This is a complete harness that is included with the airlift kit. We're gonna start at the back of the car where our manifold is, work our way forward. I'll explain what everything is and where the connections are made. All right, this is what I'll call the rear wiring harness for the vehicle. Again, pretty simple to do. This connection here plugs right in the manifold, nothing to it. This here is just a simple relay, comes with a self-tapping screw mounted anywhere in the trunk area near the manifold. This power and ground here go directly to the compressor. This is what turns the compressor on. You'll see a secondary connection down here. This has the option to run a second compressor. The kit doesn't include one, you don't have to do that. So this is there in case you need it. The same with these plugs up here. If you got the auto leveling option, all these plug into the levelers and power them. Now, in the case of this kit, it is not included with them. These don't do anything for this installation. So the only connections you really have to make are these two to the compressor. Everything else just gets mounted, that just plugs in. The rest of the connections are made at the front of the car. These two here, the red and the black wire, these go right to your battery and include a fuse for that connection. The pink wire here, this is gonna be your switch. This is what's gonna turn the system on when the car turns on. This is gonna go right to your fuse box to a switch circuit and it includes this fuse box adapter to make it very easy to plug in. The last thing, this USB cable here, just plugs into the controller. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with watching me install the wiring harness because fishing wires through the car is honestly quite boring to do. It's even more boring to watch. But what we're gonna do is get the harness in the car, and then we're gonna show you all the actual connections as we make them. Like I mentioned before with the wiring harness, the connections in the back are simple. The main harness plugs into the manifold, red and black with the red and black on the compressor. Now the connections up front, also pretty straightforward. You have a fused power lead. This goes directly to your battery. And then the black wire goes directly to the ground. Now the 12 volt ignition is a little bit trickier and we're gonna show you how to do that. Now the kit includes this fuse with this wire tap. You're gonna tap into a fuse to get 12 volt ignition to turn the system on. Now you wanna be careful what fuse you use. A lot of these are control modules, body modules. You don't wanna use one of those. The fuse we're tapping into right here is a little five amp fuse. This is actually for the blind spot indicator, which is an option on the Mustang. This one doesn't even have it, but it still has the fuse. We're using that to get our 12 volt ignition to turn our system on. The last connection is gonna be for the controller. Now what I did, this is a USB wire. I fished it under the console. So we're just gonna connect this down here. Now we hit ignition, our system will be live. Now this is Airlift's new 3P controller. This is a lot more advanced than the older controllers they used to use. This will actually work as a controller for the system, obviously, and then you can use Bluetooth and even use your phone to control it. There's actually so much to this, we're gonna do a separate video showing you all the processes of this controller and exactly how to operate it. We're just gonna show you the basics here on how to get your air system working. When you get the system connected for the first time, it's gonna tell you to run a calibration. What that's gonna do is basically go through the system, make sure that it controls all the bags properly, the tank has the proper pressure, everything's working like it's supposed to. Once you go through that, then you can actually set up your presets or you can control it manually. Now the calibration process is gonna take some time. Make sure you're hooked up to a battery charger of some sort because you will kill your battery while you're doing it. In our case, we still have it here in manual mode. You simply can push up and down here. These are gonna be your rear controls and these will be your front controls. And once you have your tank mounted, there's two additional connections you want to make. The connection on the bottom is going to be a fill slash purge line. You can run it to the outside of the car to a Schrader valve. That allows you to fill the tank manually. There's also a purge in there. You can release the air from the tank if you want to. The other line comes from the filter. That's just the drain line. It's going to have water come out of it. Just run it somewhere where it can drain easily out of the car.
Now again, when a lot of people think of airlift, this is what they think of the car laid out at a car show. But like I said, it's a performance suspension as well. The second part of this video, we're actually going to take the car out and drive it a little bit. We're also going to show you a lot more about how the controller works. As far as the installation goes, it's a long weekend. Figure even eight to ten hours probably total. Be back on the road in no time.